Hello everyone out there in YouTube land. Welcome back to Diego Noza. Of course, I'm Diego and today we're going to talk some more about The Notebook. The Notebook, that piece of shit fucking movie from 2004. That chick flick rom-com. Well, it wasn't a comedy. There was nothing funny about that fucking movie. Uh, yeah, that chick flick fucking uh, emotional romantic fucking movie uh, from 2004. Completely unfucking believable Not realistic at all. It was written by a woman. Uh, a woman with a fucking penis. Okay, that means that this woman does not understand what a fucking man is. Okay, there are no men in this fucking movie. No men at all. All right, and they're definitely not the protagonist, not the lead character. All right, so I am Diego. What I do here in my chick flick destruction series is I watch your chick flicks that you like, and I've seen I've seen them. Okay, there's there's a few of them I've never seen before, uh, but uh, I've seen them, the big ones like this one. I've seen this one several times. Okay, so I know what I'm talking about. All right, <clears throat> I was there when this movie came out. All right. I know I wasn't a big fan. I didn't go see it in the theater. Nobody wants to go see it in the theater, actually. Uh, it became famous uh, when, it, when it premiered on cable, okay, and re video rentals. That's, that's when it became a cult classic. It did not it did not make a lot of money at the theater, okay? But it was 2004. Uh, the main characters here, you've got uh, Rachel McAdams as Allie, Allie Hamilton, and she is uh, 17 years old. Uh, in real life, she was like 26 when she filmed this, or 25. And then you've got Noah, Noah Calhoun, and that's played by, uh, what the fuck's his name? Um, oh, my God. Uh, Ryan Gosling. Yes, of course, Ryan Gosling. How could I forget that? Yeah. Yeah, he, he was uh, 23 when he filmed this movie. Okay. Uh, yes, they dated in real life. Okay, so it's best these two protagonists that fall in love with each other. Now, this movie's told through flashbacks, obviously. You got James Garner, uh, plays the 75-year-old version of Noah, and uh, Gina Rollins, who is the director, Nick Cassavetti's mom. Yes, he casts his mom in the fucking movie. Uh, she plays the 75-year-old, or the, I guess the 70-year-old, uh, fucking, uh, <clears throat> uh, what's her name, Allie, Allie, um, yeah, Allie Hamilton, or whatever. Okay, but, or uh, Allie Calhoun, because I guess they're married. All right, uh, so we've already seen this movie. You already know what I'm talking about. What I'm going to give you here is a straight man's point of view, okay? I do not censor myself here, okay? So if you're easily triggered, if you're easily offended, get the fuck out right now, okay? I will not censor myself, okay? And, but I have no, I have no, uh, nothing to gain by lying to you. So I'm going to tell you the truth from a straight man's point of view. That's what I do here. The real question is, can you handle it? Can you handle the truth? Because I don't think you can, all right? I'm going to tell you what your dad didn't tell you, what your boyfriend ain't going to tell you, what your husband ain't going to tell you either, okay? I'm going to tell you the fucking truth. All right, about these fucking chick flicks and these fucking rom coms. Okay, the Notebook. I've been waiting on it for a while. Okay, now I've already reviewed other shit. I, I reviewed every episode of Sex and the City is on here, is on this channel, including the movies and that new piece of shit show. I already reviewed uh, Romeo and Juliet, uh, uh, League of Their Own, Thelma and Louise, fucking uh, Pretty Woman. Okay, I've already reviewed all that shit. Okay, it's on here. It's on. It's already on this channel. Okay, and now I'm reviewing the notebook. All right, now this is actually part two of my review. All right, so where I left off last time, okay, uh, we have uh, I've already, we've already been introduced to fucking uh, Noah. Uh, he's not called Noah yet. We don't know. We're not supposed to know. You know, yeah, spoilers. I spoiled it. Big fucking. You've already seen the movie, or else you've been watching this. All right, uh, yes, uh, James Garner is actually Noah Calhoun. Okay, but he's called Duke. Okay, they don't reveal the name of Gina Rowland's character, but uh, we do find out later on that it's Allie. Okay, uh, so they're in an old folks' home, and uh, Allie has a dementia. She has an early senility. They don't call it Alzheimer's. Uh, they call it something else. It's an early dementia. Okay, so basically she forgets things. She doesn't remember her husband. She doesn't remember her kids. She doesn't remember how she got to where she is. Uh, some days are better than others. Some days she'll actually remember who she is and what's going on and why she's in, in, this, in this nursing home. And then other days she'll, she'll, she'll draw a blank completely, okay? But her husband, uh, who sometimes she doesn't remember, realizes it's her husband, he lives there too. Okay, he's an old man and he reads to her from this book. Okay, hence the title of the movie, Notebook. All right, he reads to her from this notebook, and even though it's supposed to be a bunch of notes, uh, he reads it like it's a fucking, like it's a novel. Okay, like it's one of those trashy fucking uh, romance chick flick novels. That's that's the verbiage they use. Okay, when he's reading, uh, when he's quoting the book. Okay, and then the young man and the beautiful woman held hands together and magically fell in love. Well, no one writes their fucking journal that way, okay? But that's what he reads from the fucking notebook when he's reading to her. And he does this to get her to remember who she is. Okay, so every day uh, he tries to read to her a little bit more so that she will remember who she is, so that she will remember him. Okay? Uh, it's kind of sad, 
But I understand it. You know, he's, he is that kind of person. As we watch this movie, we'll find out that the younger version of himself is like that. Okay? He's like, he's like this patron of lost causes. He will continue to fucking do something even though there is no confirmation that he will succeed. Okay? He'll continue to fucking do something even though uh, uh, the chances that he will succeed are, are extremely unlikely. He will continue to do it. Why? Because he's a fucking idiot. All right? But anyway... Let's move on to it, okay? So he starts reading about the story about how they first met. They met at a carnival in Seabrook, uh, North Carolina, this very racist uh, place in 1940, okay? Um, so she comes from a very wealthy family, very antebellum, okay? Uh, southern accents, you know, the white, the white, you know, think Boss Hog from Dukes of Hazard, okay? <laughs> okay, she comes from a very privileged uh, white family. All their servants are black. Okay, the servants are basically slaves. Uh, they just get paid. Okay, she comes from a very privileged uh, family. Okay, uh, her parents are very active in her life. They have a very, they structure her entire life. They already decided where she's going to go to college and what she's going to do for a living and what type of man she's going to marry. Okay, so we don't know that yet, but this is what we, we learn about her. Okay, and then we're introduced to Noah. He's a poor guy. He works at a fucking lumber yard. He works, he lives with his dad. I don't know what happened to his mom. I don't know if his mom ran off. Or, or something, or if she died, I don't know. Uh, they might reveal that later on in the movie, but I don't remember if they did. Uh, basically, he lives with his dad, okay, and he works at a lumber yard. He's poor. You can tell by the clothes that he's wearing and the clothes that she's wearing, that, and she, the guys that she's with, okay, they they have expensive clothes on for 1940, and he's dressed like a fucking, like a country bumpkin, because he is. He is, okay? He's a very blue-collar guy, all right? So he says, he's at a carnival. He looks at her, of course, he fucking falls in love with her immediately, Okay, now I already mentioned before that it is capable, guys are capable of fucking falling in infatuation immediately and lust immediately, but falling in love, well, you could say that he's not in love with her yet until later on, yeah, but that's not the theme of the movie, okay? He, once he meets her, his entire life is based on making her happy and keeping her in his life. That doesn't change at all, okay? He never gets mad at her, really. He never fucking, like, like gives up on the idea that this girl is going to be his woman. He's already convinced himself this is, this is the woman he's going to spend the rest of his life with. Okay, despite the fact he doesn't even fucking know her yet. He's already convinced himself of that, and he will continue that throughout the entire fucking movie. Okay, now, does that make good for a fucking chick flick? Yes, it probably does. It's very un unrealistic and unbelievable, but so is fucking Infinity War of the Avengers, and I love that movie. Okay, but it's not, it's not, um, it's not realistic in a fucking, in, in a real life is what I'm talking about, okay? Uh, even people that fall in love at that young age, okay, they go through a lot of shit in their life, okay, before they get to the point where they just rely on each other so much, okay? We don't really get to see that yet, okay? A big portion of, of, of the relationship that he has with his wife is left out of the movie. We see them in their, in their 20s to their late 20s, and then we see them as old people, and that's it. There's a big chunk in there that we don't know about, okay? Anyway, but, I, but I'm, I'm going too forward, all right? So it's 1940, they meet at the carnival. He actually just comes, walks right up to her, which takes some balls. But, you know, it was 1940. This was the generation that won World War II, which has not started for us yet. Uh, you know, Pearl Harbor hadn't happened yet. It's going to happen in another year. Okay, so guys had more guts. If they started, there, was no, there was no social media back then. You could just swipe right or left on someone that you liked, okay? If you saw someone you liked, you went up to them and started talking to them. That's how you did it back in the old days. I know, you don't do that anymore. But that's how they did it back in the old days. So he went straight up to her. But I think, I think what was kind of unrealistic and what, and what I would have critiqued him on, he got right in her face, basically. She mentions it a little bit later. She's like, oh my God, he was like two feet away from me when he talked to me. He's like, yeah, he kind of invaded her personal space. And she was already with a, a group of other guys. Okay, she was doing fucking the, the, the bumper cars, all right? So when he approached her, he said, hey, you want to go out with me? He didn't say, hey, my name's Noah Calhoun. Who are you? Okay, nice to meet you. I would like to know if you'd like to go out with me. He didn't do that. He's like, you want to go out with me? She's like, no. Well, why not? Because I don't want to, you know? And then the, guy, the guys that she's, the rich guys that she's with, hey, uh, uh, she's with us, you know? You know and, hey, how would you like to go on the, on the Ferris wheel with me? She's like, I'd love to. And then you're like, oh, what a bitch, okay? All right, now, and now yes, maybe he deserved it, okay? Because he was way too forward, okay? He didn't fucking go in. He had no segue. He just went right there. Hey, you want to go out with me? You know, like, who the fuck does that? Okay, that's stupid. You're not going to win over a girl by doing that. But he's just like, instead of fucking accepting the fact that he just got rejected, okay? There's a lot of other beautiful women at this fucking carnival. This movie's not going to show you that. This movie's going to show you that he's got other options, Okay, we're not going to go there in this movie. You know why? Because not, not only would it be too realistic and the guys will start watching this movie. Okay, but if you do that, it's going to take away the focus from Rachel McAdams. It's going to take away the focus from Allie. Allie's got to be the queen of the fucking movie. She's got to be the object that everybody wants or else the movie doesn't fucking work. Okay, so we just have to go along, just go with it. That fucking all he can think about, he's got tunnel vision out the ass. 
Okay, he just wants this girl and nobody else ever in his life. Okay, and that's bullshit. It's just not realistic, okay? If a guy has the kind of confidence where he can go up to a girl just like that and say something fucking stupid and recover from that, okay? He's got the confidence to do that to a whole bunch of girls. Eventually, he's going to find a girl that's going to want him, okay? And I'm guessing he only likes pretty girls because, I mean, Rachel McAdams is a pretty girl, okay? Despite the fact she's got a big mole right here and right here that I can't get my eyes off of, okay? Despite that, she's a pretty girl. I mean, she's got great legs, all right? Yeah. All right, so if he's the kind of guy that can do that, has the confidence to go up to a girl right to their fucking face and ask him out like that and then not give up, then he's got the confidence to do that to a whole bunch of girls. And there's a lot of fucking girls at this carnival, okay? So I don't believe that he would end up with her, uh, but I believe that maybe she would be like the 15th or 16th girl that he hit on at that carnival, okay? And then he, then he gets it with her, okay? That's a lot more realistic. Not only that, it makes him more attractive. You know why? Because if, if one pretty girl likes him, all of a sudden other pretty girls start liking him. But if no pretty girls like him, no girls like him. You see what I mean? That's kind of how it works, all right? So if she knew that there's other women that will take him, if she don't, that would make her more attracted to him, okay? But since that's not happening here, you just have to go with it. If anything, it's the other way around. There's a whole bunch of rich guys around her, and he's trying to fucking get through them to get to her, okay? Which is not very realistic. Like I said, in real life, it's the other way around, okay? In real life... It's the guy that's got the other girls around that makes the guy more attractive to the one girl. Okay? Uh, but not, not in this situation. All right. But like I said, uh, this movie was written by a woman. A woman with a fucking penis named Nicholas Sparks. So anyway, so she, so she blows him off. He does not take no for an answer. He watches her. He stares at her like a fucking rapist would. Okay? And while she's uh, on the Ferris wheel with this other guy, this rich guy, he decides to jump on the fucking Ferris wheel. Okay? And he immediately sits in between them. Okay. He's like, hey... Remember me? I just want to know why you won't go out with me. You know, that kind of bullshit. Like, you know, this is like stalker behavior. This really is, okay? Now, she's not really impressed with him. Uh, she told her girlfriend after he, she shot him down. She told her girlfriend, Sarah, that, hey, can you believe he got right in my face like that? And she tells, oh, yeah, he's a poor guy. He works at Lumberyard. This was his dad. That kind of shit, you know? Um, and she's like, I'm surprised he even came over. He must like you. Well, no fucking shit. If a guy go, go, makes a beeline straight to a girl and asks her out immediately, yes, he likes her. Now, that's not the way you ask out a girl, but yes, uh, yeah, he's not, he's not talking to her because he wants to fucking, uh, to know what kind of book she reads, okay? He wants to fucking smash, okay? That's why he went straight for her, okay? That's basically, it's just a guy who's going after a fucking uh, piece of ass, all right? And, and despite the fact that, you know, we got this fucking um, rape culture thing that doesn't fucking exist, okay? Uh, that is how guys used to have to do it, okay? You used to have to actually go up to the girl and talk to her, all right? But anyway, um... So, so, like I said, he jumped on the Ferris wheel with them. He sits in between her and her date. Okay, B basically a cock block right here. Now, uh, this had been my situation. First of all, I never would have done it. I never would have jumped on that fucking Ferris wheel. She already shot me down. She already shot me down. Okay, I would have started talking to other girls at the carnival. I would have started talking to other girls at the carnival. Eventually, I'm going to get one that likes me back. First of all, I'm only going to hit on the girls that I'm attracted to, number one. Okay, and eventually, one of them is going to want to be with me. Okay, and that's the one I'm going to be with that night. Okay, that's how this shit works in real life. But this movie ain't gonna go there. This movie ain't gonna, not gonna show him acting like a real man. It's gonna show him acting like a fucking pussy whipped. I'm hopelessly in love with a fucking chick. Okay, that I don't even fucking know. And for the rest of the fucking movie. Okay, and that's not realistic at all. All right, so he jumps on there. Now the guy that's there tells her, "Hey, you mind? You know, well he can't exactly jump off now. He's already on the fucking Ferris wheel, way up in the fucking air." Okay. Okay, and, uh, you know, uh, stop the wheel. Okay, so um, the, the, the guy stops the wheel, okay, uh, the Ferris wheel conductor. And so what does he do? Uh, she tells him, basically, hey, you can't have three people in, in, a, in a chair like that. So what he does, he jumps off and grabs onto one of the rails. Okay, so basically he's hanging in front of them like this. Okay, yes. Okay, uh, and, and he threatens to commit suicide. Yeah, okay, that's how you win a girl over, right? He threatens fucking suicide. This is telling us a couple of things about Noah Calhoun. He doesn't even give a shit about his own fucking life. Okay? He doesn't even give a shit about his own fucking life. What kind of a man do you think this guy is? Okay, how can a man like that, who doesn't even give a shit about himself, uh, support a woman? Take care of a woman? Worry about making a woman happy? You know? How can, how can a man like that accept a woman's love? He doesn't give a shit about himself. He would rather fucking risk his life just to get a girl to say yes to a fucking date. Okay, what kind of a man does that? The kind of man you do not want to date. Okay, very unattractive. Now, in this movie, plays it off. He's cute. Ryan Gosling's so cute. It's so romantic what he did out there. No, the threatening to kill yourself 
If a girl doesn't go out with you, it's not romantic. It's not romantic. I don't give a fuck who you are or what you look like. There's nothing romantic about that. Okay? That's fucking stupid. Okay? It's just another form of programming that men have to hurt themselves or threaten to hurt themselves in order to win a woman's approval. That's the message that's being said here, okay? That's the single mom showing. Obviously, Nicholas Sparks had a single mom that raised him, okay? Because that's the kind of shit they fucking teach you, okay? You give up everything, make the woman happy. That's the most important thing. Your happiness doesn't fucking matter. Your life doesn't fucking matter. What is important to you does not fucking matter. The only thing that fucking matters, okay, is her happiness. That's your job, okay? That's a bullshit fucking narrative. Bullshit. And here it is displayed in 3D for you, okay? He's threatening to kill himself if she refuses to go out with him. And he's doing it while she's already on a date with another fucking guy. Okay, not realistic bullshit flag. Lots of bullshit flags in this movie. That's another one, okay? So finally he does, oh God, I'm losing, my, I'm losing my grip. I ain't gonna leave until you say you're gonna go out with me. You know, so finally she says, okay, yes, yes. I'll do it, I'll go out with you. Uh, uh, I didn't believe that. You might wanna say it again, I'm losing my grip. Okay, I'll go out with you. Okay, okay. You know, that kind of thing. It's just fucking stupid. <clears throat> yeah, yeah, suicide. Th the threat of suicide is gonna get a girl to go out with you. Get the fuck out of here. Okay, so finally she agrees. She says, okay, I want to go out with you. She said, you think you're so smart? And he's hanging there. So what does she decide to do? Okay, she decides to pull down his fucking pants. Because he's hanging with both of his arms, right? So she decides to fucking uh, embarrass him and pull down his pants. Okay, no, not the full Monty, not the full moon either. Just, just to his fucking his boxers, okay? Now let me tell you something, okay? If this had been me hanging from there, which for, it wouldn't be me. I never would have done that. Okay, I actually give a shit about my fucking life. Okay, um, if that had been me, I'd be like, baby, you know what? If you pull down my pants, you already agree to go out with me. But if you pull down my pants, you're gonna have to wait in line. <laughs> Out here in front of everybody? Yeah, you're gonna have to wait in line. <laughs> okay, that's a joke. That's a joke. All right. But that's the point. So, she, no, she doesn't pull down his fucking. That, that, that's what she should have done. But no, she just pulls down his pants. Now, he's already fucking about to fucking die, okay, hanging from the fucking Ferris wheel. And then she's gonna humiliate him on top of that. Like, he hasn't humiliated himself enough, okay? Like, her agreeing to go out with him because he threatened to kill himself, that's called duress. That's not, that's not, you can't take that seriously, okay? Um, that, that, that he would hold her to her fucking, you know, she said that so that he would fucking come down and not kill himself. Okay, so now you have to emasculate him on top of that. He's already emasculated himself. Why do you have to add to that? Okay, it's like, it's like a guy who, who gets beat up, all right? He's on the floor, he's in pain, he lost the fight, and then a girl goes up there and kicks him in the face. He's already down, okay? Why would you do that? Because she feels entitled to fucking hurt this guy because he is so willing to hurt himself. Okay, you see the pattern here? You see, you see this, the foundation of this relationship right here? Exactly. That's what I'm talking about. <clears throat> so anyway, the next day or something, uh, he sees her. It's daytime now. Okay, and he sees her. She's in a very expensive dress. She looks really good. I mean, hey, Rachel McGann is a pretty girl. She's very thin. You know, she looks very feminine. The flower in her hair. Her hair done 1940s style. You know, uh, heels. You know, she's got a, a summer dress on. He approaches her. Okay, and he apologizes to her for the way that he, like, how can you apologize for fucking uh, threatening to kill yourself, all right? She doesn't know this guy. If I was her, I, I would fucking stay away from him. I wouldn't even uh, bother to talk to him, okay? Like, how dare you, motherfucker? You know, I, I, I thought you were, I thought I was going to watch you fucking die in front of me, okay? That's why I agreed to it. And now I really, you don't even give a shit what you did to me. You scared me. All of a sudden, you put, you put your life in my fucking hands. Who the fuck do you think you are to do that to me? That's what I would have done. That's what a feminist would have done. But no, not here. Not here. She decides just to emasculate him some more. Okay? Um, he approaches her pie. He says, I was, being, I was being drawn to you. That's what he says. This is what he tells her. He says, I was being drawn to you. Now what about our date? You promised. And when I, it's just, when I see something I like, I gotta, I gotta, I, I gotta love it. I gotta love it. He stops himself there. Yeah, you know, you're a fucking rapist, motherfucker. She's like, your lines are so good. Obviously, she's being sarcastic. Your lines are so good. Oh, my God. They're, like, so good. Yeah, I am so impressed. I mean, they're fantastic, really. He's like, oh, no, no, no. Don't be like, let me emasculate myself some more so you know that I'm being sincere. You know? He's like, I can be fun if you want. I can be smart, superstitious. 
I'm out of my feet. <laughs> I can be whatever you want. Just tell me what you want. And I'll be that. See what I mean? In other words, emasculation, okay? He's giving up his fucking masculinity for her. He's offering, he's, he's fucking, he's slaying it and, and giving it to her on a fucking silver platter. I have no testicles. Here they are. They're yours now. You didn't ask me for them. I'm just giving them to you. Do whatever you want. Cut them up. Eat them up. Feed it to your dog. I don't give a shit. Whatever you want, I will give it to you. Because I just fucking met you yesterday. See what I mean? This, this is not this is not a good message. It's not very realistic. The kind of the kind of guys that actually do this in real life, because I guess they do exist. The kind of guys that do this in real life are not the guys that uh, women find attractive. Okay, these are the guys that cannot get women. That they feel that they have to do this to get a woman. Okay, Ryan, sorry, but Ryan Gosling doesn't look like a guy who's going to have a hard, a super hard time uh, getting a girl. Okay, he's the best looking guy in this fucking movie. Okay, he's the heartthrob. He's the focus, uh, the main protagonist, the main love interest in this movie. There's no better looking guys, really, uh, that are as grounded as him in this movie. Okay, I mean, later on, they'll get to James Morrison, but he's, he's a fucking cuck. All right. He's just there to offer his masculinity to her on a silver platter that she did not ask for. He's basically saying, make fun of me. You can cut off my dick. You can, you can tell me I'm a piece of shit. You can kick me in the fucking face. You can stick a bean pole up my ass. I don't care. It's okay. Just as long as you smile at me and go out with me. You see what I mean? That's basically what's going on here. Uh, there's no self-respect here. This guy doesn't understand what self-respect is. He's not a real man, like I said. All right. Basically, that's, that's what he's saying here. Okay. And uh, I know it's like, yeah, I can be fun. I can be whatever you want me to be. I'll be that for you. And he's like, you're dumb. And he's like, I can be that. <laughs> and she, she, she says that she changed her mind about the day. That she, made, that she made that promise to go out with him. That was under duress. She changed her mind about it. Okay. And he pesters her. Hey, but what about our day? When are we going to go out again? What can I do to change your mind? And she's just like, and of course, she's got a black servant that opens the car door for her to get in. And she's like, uh, you can figure that out on your own. Like, like, so even now she's telling him, you better fucking uh, dance some more, you fucking monkey. You better fucking uh, entertain me some more before I even think about even letting you kiss my hand, much less go out on a date with you. You see, this is the fucking message, okay? That women are fucking like their stink, don't, their shit don't stink, okay? That every woman is a fucking queen, deserves to be treated. No, no, some women are queens, most women are not, okay? Now, I do believe in treating a woman with respect, okay? But uh, a woman like this, and I'm not, first of all, I would never try to kill myself. Uh, to get a girl to go out with me. I would never do that, okay? But if I was just normally trying to talk to a girl and she was speaking to me this way, I would already read it. Okay, she wants me to fucking do a song and dance. She wants me to humiliate myself, okay, uh, for her amusement. And then maybe uh, she'll give me her phone number or something. Fuck that noise, okay? I am nobody's fucking cuck. I am nobody's fucking fool. I actually have something called fucking self-respect. And that's something that nobody in this fucking movie, none of the guys in this movie, actually fucking have. Self-fucking respect, okay? It's not about what people think. Or what do you think about yourself? Is this the kind of person that you are? You'll just give up your fucking whole identity for, for another person that they never asked for? That you don't even know? Because you got a heart on? No, no, this is stupid. This is fucking stupid. Simp, desperate man behavior. Okay, incel behavior. Anyway. <clears throat> so anyway, him and his friend decide to go to the movies uh, later on. We don't know how much later, okay? They're going to go see Little Abner. That is a movie that came out in 1940, okay? It's basically, it was a comic strip first that came out in the 1920s. Uh, the guy that created the comic strip eventually, he only had one arm. <laughs> okay, yeah. He had one arm that was amputated, okay? And he actually, um, uh, he got in trouble for like raping uh, some of his employees. But anyway, uh, he did create the comic strip called Little Abner. It came out around the same time that Popeye and Betty Boop came out, okay? And they decided to make a live action version of uh, Little Abner, which is basically what some fucking uh, uh, Jewish cartoonist in New York thinks uh, that, that uh, Republicans are, okay? Basically, uh, what rednecks are, okay? And this Little Abner uh, movie was so popular with the, with the public at the time that they actually, uh, it inspired the Beverly Hillbillies, okay? Yes, the Beverly Hillbillies, okay? Basically what they think that fucking, um, uh, that, that rednecks are uh, in, 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 the, in the Midwestern part of the United States, okay? That's what Little Abner was, okay? It was an exaggeration, okay? Uh, basically, you had Jeth a Jethro, you had a Daisy May, you had a grandpa, a grandma, that kind of thing. It was all in there, a ma, pa, you know, that kind of thing, yeah. Uh, Little Abner, which was a popular thing back in 1940, okay? And it turns out that it was a, a fix-up date, okay? So his friend uh, took Noah there, 
And um, Allie's friend Sarah took Allie there, okay, not telling them that the reason they brought them there was so that uh, Allie and Noah could have their date. Okay, so of course, there's, uh, Allie's shocked, you know, and they're like, yeah, just go with it, come on, you know. Uh, so it was a fixed up date, okay. Uh, so the friend, uh, so while they're watching Little Abner, okay, we notice that the two friends, Sarah and, and Noah's friend, I forgot his name, they're together. They're, they're already dating each other, okay, and they're making out. Okay, they're not even watching the movie. They're making out. So on on, uh, on the on the the guy friend side is Noah, and on Sarah's side is Allie. Okay, so they're sitting two people away from each other. So Noah, of course, decides to get up, and guess what? The seat next to Allie just hap just conveniently happens to be empty. So he gets up out of his seat, walks over to her, and sits down next to her. Okay, and starts sharing his popcorn with her. Okay. Now, why in the first, first of all, that never would have happened if that had been me, okay? Either I'm sitting with the girl when we get there, or I'm not, okay? I'm not watching the fucking movie, okay? So if it had been me, uh, I never would have fucking sat down with my friends uh, in between me and the girl that I'm supposed to be on a date with. I'm going to sit next to the girl that I'm supposed to be on a date with. And if she has a problem with that, okay, you watch the movie alone. I'm going home, bye. That's what would happen in real life, okay? But not here. No, he's got to fucking walk over. Once again, he's got to fucking play the dancing monkey uh, to win her fucking attention. And just, it's a no, no. Not at, the, not at the cost of your self-respect. Not at all. Okay, so he goes over there, sits next to her. They're watching the fucking movie. Okay. Um, and he know, you know, they're trying to avoid the fact that their friends are making out right in front of them. All right? Or right next to them. Okay, so after the movie's over, um, uh, you know, they're, they're all sharing a car. Okay, uh, the couple, Sarah and, and Noah's friend, they decide to get in the car, and uh, Noah and Allie, they decide they're going to walk. Okay, now the streets are fucking empty. Like I said, there's some boonduck town, uh, Seabrook, fucking South Carolina, you know, in 1940. There's probably nobody in town at that hour, okay? So the streets are all empty, the shops are all closed, it's very quiet, you know, and I mean, they're in the South, you know? So they decide to go for a walk. Okay, and of course the, the, the kids are, are making fun of them, going, "Are you going, are you doing love? You all are in love, aren't you? Yeah, you're in love." You know, you know, the, 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 the shit you're not supposed to say when two people meet each other and trying to get to know each other. You know, uh, so that's going on. You guys love each other, but whatever, whatever. You know, they're, they're just being funny, good naturedly. Okay, uh, so um, they start walking, and now we learn a little bit about them. Okay. Um, one thing I didn't notice is fucking Noah's walking on the wrong side of the street. He's supposed to walk uh, next to the street. He's walking on the other side. She's walking next to the street. <laughs> How's that for feminism? This is 1940. All right. So anyway, so we learned a little thing about, about her. We learned a lot about her, actually. Uh, she has not seen a movie since she was a little girl. This is the first time she's seen a movie in a long time. Okay. Her life is very structured. Okay, her parents make all the decisions for her. Uh, she has a routine that she goes through every day. She goes to school. She does this. She does that. She goes to classes. You know, she spends time with her family. Uh, so basically, that's her life. Her life is structured, and all, all the big decisions on her future are made by her parents. Okay, they decide what school she's going to go to, and they're going to pick the kind of guy she's going to marry and what she's going to do. Okay. Um, so he hears all this, and he's trying to nigger right now, which is something that guys do uh, when they're trying to when they're trying to um, to win over a girl. Okay, is you kind of like if you point out the faults with the girl, it makes the girl um, uh, more, more try to win over your approval instead of you trying to win over her approval. Okay, uh, it makes her want to uh, want you to approve of her. Okay, it's called a nag. It's a pickup artist trick. Okay, where basically you get you to doubt yourself, you get women to doubt themselves, so they'll try to make themselves look good in front of the guy. The guy can see this, so he automatically the power is switched. Now he's the one in charge instead of her. Now he's the one that she needs to win his approval now. Okay, that that's what he's doing here, and it works. It works. Of course, it works. That's why guys do it because it works. Okay. Um, uh, so, so yeah, so he's basically telling her he's like, you know what, you know, he says he's not impressed. By her life, you know, and then she doesn't seem free. So I thought you'd be more free, you know. So basically, he's playing that game. So now she's trying to win his approval. I, I'm free. I can do what I want. Yeah, no, really, I can't. You know that kind of thing. You know. Um, so that's going on here. I goes like, all right, hey, let me show you something. Let me show you something. Okay. So he decides to walk into the middle of the fucking street. There's no traffic, and he decides to lay down in the middle of the fucking uh, intersection there. Okay, and he's spread eagle right there on the on the floor, in the middle of the fucking street, on his back. And he tells her some bullshit. Yeah, hey, my dad and I used to do this. We just lay here and watch the watch the uh, the street lights change colors. Really, that's the thing people do, you know. Uh, and she's like, "Oh, it's crazy! You're getting hit by a car. There's no cars around here right now. It's dangerous." You see, that's your problem. That's your problem, Allie. You don't do what you want. 
Well, yes, I do. So she decides to show him up and gets, she gets down there with him and lays down uh, in the middle of the street with him. Okay? So she lays down there with him and now you know, she starts opening up to him about some shit. She's like, you know, I like to paint. <laughs> Where the fuck did that come from? Okay, well, I guess it's because he asked her, like, you don't get to do what you want. She's like, yeah, I do. I like to paint. You know, I got all these thoughts going through my head, just bouncing around in my head all the time. Yeah, you know what? You know what it sounds like, Allie? You sound like a fucking stripper. Okay? You sound like a fucking stripper. And this ain't the only time you're going to act like a stripper, too. Okay? And all of a sudden, a car's like, burr, burr, and the, the light comes, burr, and they have to jump off, you know, before they get run over by the car. Although, realistically, a car would have stopped once he saw them there, until he saw them get up. Anyway, so that's going on. So they get up out of the way. Okay? Um, he's scared, and she's just giggling. She's like, yeah! I almost got run over by a car. <laughs> that was so fun. That was so fun. I almost got run over by a car. <laughs> like that. Like, get the, what the fuck, man? You know what you are? You're a fucking psycho, okay? You're a stripper. You're a fucking stripper. All right? And I know strippers, okay? Yeah, you're, you're one of them. All right? So, um, yeah, I almost got run over by a car. She's all giddy about it, you know? And he decides that while she's over here laughing about how she almost fucking died, because I guess that's the theme of this movie, it's fun uh, to attempt to kill yourself. That's fun. That's a good thing. Uh, he decides to ask her to dance, even though there's no music around. Uh, so, of course, she agrees to it. So they start dancing, all romantic, like, you know, slow dancing in the middle of fucking street in the intersection. There's no, no one else around. He starts humming a song. Uh, he starts humming, um, uh, well, uh, I'll Be Seeing You by Billie Holiday. Okay, but I, and she's like, I like that song, but... Uh, not this version. <laughs> so of course, that's when the soundtrack comes on in the movie, and you start hearing the actual song that they're that they're just humming. Okay, but they're dancing to this song, you know, uh, "I'll Be Seeing You" by Billie Holiday. Now I like Billie Holiday. Okay, yes, I saw that movie. They did one on Amazon Prime. Or was it Netflix recently? Okay, but I also remember the uh, Lady Sings the Blues from 1972. No, I wasn't born back then. Uh, I saw that movie later after it came out. Uh, that was with Billy Dee Williams and Diana Ross played uh, Billie Holiday in that movie, Lady Sings the Blues. So I know who Billie Holiday is. I actually like a lot of her music. Uh, I like um, Stormy Weather. It's a great song. Uh, and so is uh, You Are My Thrill. Uh, that was in the Watchmen movie, okay? You Are My Thrill. That's a great song, too. But she's also famous for this one. Uh, you know, um, I'll Be Seeing You. And then she got in trouble. You've probably seen that Netflix movie about her, you know, where she got arrested for singing a song in public where she wasn't allowed to. And that the fucking the black FBI agent, like, used her to fucking get information on her. And she actually drank herself to death and died of cirrhosis of the liver in 1959. Very sad, but she was a very talented singer, okay? Uh, so, uh, meanwhile, in the present day, the old woman... Uh, confirms that they fell. She's like, they fell in love, didn't they? You know, uh, Gina Rollins now is like, they fell in love, didn't they? He's like, yes, they did. She's like, this sounds kind of familiar to me. Yes, it probably is. I know something you don't. Anyway. Okay, so that's going to stop my review right now. Uh, and I'll be back soon with part three and we will continue with The Notebook. I thank you for watching this long and I'll see you soon in the next one. Bye.